So as you know, emojis have entered into our daily lives when you're using, you know, instant messaging services like WhatsApp or Telegram, whatever you're using, even emails now. We just include emojis absolutely everywhere. Now, of course, emojis are very different to normal letters. If you're talking about English, you know, ABC, okay, we've been using letters and numbers and symbols on computers since way back in the, the 60s. But now we're sending you know messages that are sending emojis and little wavy hands and faces and all. and the question is how are these encoded okay it's one thing to encode the letter a but how do you encode a little picture that shows you uh, an emotion that portrays some kind of thing very very different thing so in this video i want to look at how emojis are encoded uh, and how they are transmitted around with normal text because obviously you normally write something and then you include you know a smiley face or a grinning face with text so how does that happen that's what we're going to cover in this video so if you want to find out more please let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. How do then uh, computers encode emojis? We have to go way back to the 60s. And uh, as it is with computers, often there are decisions made in the 60s and the 70s that we're still living with the uh, consequences, good or bad, uh, today. So way back in the 60s, there was a method developed called the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, which is a way to represent letters, digits, punctuation and so on as numbers for a computer to store or transmit or, or work with. It was developed in part from the telegraph codes and it initially included 128 characters, which means you needed seven bits to encode it. So for example, the letter A is encoded as 65 decimal, uh, OX41 in hexadecimal, uh, space is 32, zero is 48, and so on. If you look at this table here, just look at this one for example, there is space and it's 32 in ASCII. And computers have been using these codes ever since then, way back from the 60s until now, uh, 65 is still A. And we'll get more into this now in a moment. Now that was seven bits. Now eventually computers kind of settled on eight bits because there was an era, an era when we had 12 bit computers and so on. So eight bits became the kind of the norm. And so there was an eight bit version of ASCII. Uh, and so you can see here, look, you've got your A is 65 there. But then over here, you've got other characters, some with accents on them, some of the different characters you might want to make to make, uh, you know, windows appear in a text format you know of blocks and borders and corners here and so on and there's some currency signs and so on and so forth now the upper part of the table this part here isn't very fixed because you know this is uh, this is the table in fact from the ibm pc when it came out this is called code page 437 and these characters are defined by IBM in this case for that for the IBM PC but there are other code pages that define different things so this one here shows you the differences uh, between 437 and this is actually code page 850 which is the Latin one so some of these characters have changed here the ones in blue have changed here for the uh, code page 851. Now, of course, this is just the European languages. There are hundreds of different code pages. If you start to think about, you know, Greek, Japanese, you know, or whatever, you know, there's so many different ones. And then they actually started to be different across operating systems. So the code pages for DOS, for Windows, Mac OS, IBM's uh, Unix implementations. Then there were some standard ISO code pages that were designed, for example, 8859-1. And so you got this kind of real problem and i've had this myself many times in the past obviously years ago now you'd upload a file and you wanted to edit it but you weren't using the right code page so the characters all came out all wrong so by the late 80s and early 90s a new wider ascii was developed that used 16 bits enough to encompass the characters of all the world's living languages this was later expanded to 24 bits enough to cover a million different characters the new the new standard was called unicode and today we're on unicode version 16 and it has currently 150,000 different characters in it including emojis which is 
of course, what we're talking about. The characters are named after the hexadecimal number of the code point, they call it, of the character in the Unicode table. So A remains as 0041, so it's the hexadecimal, so that's 65 in decimal, 41 in hexadecimal. And the first emoji is 1F600, so you can see that's a much, much bigger number than 41, it's at the other end of the table. And so here's the first part of the Unicode table. As you can see, it maintains that compatibility with ASCII. So A is still 65, zero is the same, space is the same, in fact, they're all the same, so that there is this overlap between Unicode and ASCII, which means you know there's a great level of backwards compatibility, which is, of course, what we needed. But higher up the other end of the table, you can see all these things here, like here's where the, the emojis start. There are gaps in it. This isn't completely full because there's a lot of space in this table. And so there are all kinds of things, not only emojis, there are, of course, all the different characters for Greek and, you know, Japanese and Chinese, you know, whatever else. There's loads of stuff uh, in there, including enough space for emojis, which, of course, are used so much nowadays. Now, the problem is that most systems work using 8-bit bytes. They're expecting things uh, in 8 bits. Uh, they're not expecting characters to turn up in 16 or 24 bits. A is still universally 65, one byte, not two bytes or three bytes. So how do you transmit, how do you send around information to say, actually, this is a Unicode character that's actually higher up in the table? How do you not just read that first byte and say, oh, this is the letter Q? But in fact, it's not the letter Q, it's actually a letter, a beginning of a sequence to show you a much bigger character higher up in the table. So to maintain a backward compatibility, we use a thing called UTF-8, Unicode Transformation Format. 8 bits and basically it works like this if a utf8 sequence starts with a zero bit then it's just basically good old-fashioned ascii the seven bit kind the first 128 characters so uh, 65 is a so we can say it starts with a zero zero one because it was seven bits so if you see that and it's just a character even when it's encoded as utf8 you say nope that's just the letter a and space and so on that means for backwards compatibility it's absolutely brilliant because all those things, text files written in English with a standard, you know, uh, ASCII format, they work even when they're encoded in UTF-8. But if that character starts with a one, then UTF says this is a multi-byte character. So when you've got UTF stream, you know whether it's going to be multi-byte or not. So if it starts with one, one, it's two bytes, one, one, one is three bytes, and one, 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 one is four bytes. So two, three, four, two, three, four. So the number of ones at the beginning tell you how many bytes long this sequence is. So you can get to the higher end parts of the table, which are way beyond 128, way beyond 256. They're right up the other end of the table. So here's a working example for you. The copyright symbol in uh, Unicode is 00A9. Now, in binary, without the leading zeros, that's that there. Now, it can't be encoded as a single UTF-8 byte because it starts with a 1, so we know we're going to have to put it into two bytes to make this fit in UTF-8. And so the way it works like this, you have two bytes, one of which starts with 110, which says it's a two-byte UTF-8 code, and the continuation byte in UTF-8 is always starts with 10. And the reason for that is if somehow there's a garbled transmission, if somehow you pick up a UTF stream halfway through, you know that nothing starts with 10. Either starts with 110 or 1110 or 1110. Nothing starts with 10. So you know it's a continuation byte and you keep going until you can find the beginning of an, a proper UTF sequence. So that's really good. Now, if you look at this, you've got five bits left over here six bits left over here, that's 11 bits in total in which you can encode your uh, number. So if we take our number for the copyright symbol here and we pad that to 11 bits, then what you do is you put those down into that format, 110 something or other and 10. So if you look at that, the result is always 11010. And then these other bits here are the bits that are the, the data you want to portray across. So here's the first five bits go into that part 
and here's the remaining six bits go into that part. You strip off these bits, join them together, and you're going to end up with that again, so you know it's the copyright symbol. In other words, Unicode 00A9. Let's try a more complicated one. Let's try the grinning face emoji. So that's Unicode number is 1F600. That's a huge number. So in binary, that is, look at all this. That's a huge big number there. In fact, it's 20 bits long if you pad it out here. 20 bits uh, long there. So when you have a 4 byte UTF-8, you start with 11110, that's the mark of 4 bytes, and you get 3 bits left over, and then 3 lots of continuations that all start with 10, 6 bits, 6 bits, 6 bits, so 3 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 21 bits. So if we change our padding now here to be 21 bits, all we need to do is add an extra zero there at the at the begin at the beginning, and that's now 21 bits long for the the Unicode number for the smiley face. And then we just do is we just put that into that structure here, 11110. And so you can see here's a structure inside those four bytes of the UTF-8 sequence, and then we copy across the different bits into each of the words, and that gives us F09, F98. Eight zero. So F zero nine F nine eight eight zero is the UTF eight encoding, and when you decode that, you'll get one F six zero zero, which then tells you it's the grinning face emoji. Now, one last thing to mention: you can check all this out very simply in Python. If you take something here, for example, like the grinning face, and that's just in the text editor that I've used there, so that's the way it's representing it, and then you can use the encode string function, you can say it's UTF-8, that will convert this into UTF-8, and then you can print it out in binary in hex, so look here, F09F 9880, that's what we were just talking about, and notice again here's the binary 11110, that's the starting point there, 101010, the continuation byte, and then you're filling it in again with all those numbers. So Python's a really good way of being able just to uh, verify and, you know, Check for yourself how these numbers are encoded. Give yourself a bit of a test uh, and see how it works there. But there you go. UTF-8, a simple way to transmit Unicode numbers, which can be big. And Unicode numbers can point to, well, hundreds of thousands of different characters that exist, including emojis. Okay, so there you go. Emojis. I really hope you enjoyed this look at that video. If there are any other kind of encodings that you'd be interested to find out about, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy these kinds of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Also, please check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.